Hi, welcome to Amazing Weapons, the channel where we explore the most amazing weapons in the world. Today, we're going to talk about the IAI Kafir, an Israeli multi-role combat aircraft that was based on the French Dassault Mirage 5, but with some major modifications and improvements. The name Kafir means lion cub in Hebrew, and it reflects the power and agility of this fighter jet. The Kafir was developed by Israel Aircraft Industries in the 1970s, and it served as the main air superiority fighter of the Israeli Air Force for several years. It was also exported to several foreign operators, such as Colombia, Ecuador, and Sri Lanka, where it saw action in various conflicts. Now, let's see how it came to be. The story of the Kafir begins with Israel's need for adapting the Mirage 3 to its specific requirements. The Mirage 3 was a French-made Delta-winged fighter that Israel acquired in the 1960s. It was a fast and agile aircraft, but it had some limitations, such as its short range and its lack of advanced avionics. Israel wanted a more capable capable version of the Mirage 3, one that could perform both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. In the mid-1960s, Israel asked France to develop a new variant of the Mirage 3, called the Mirage 5, which was optimized for ground attack. The Mirage 5 had a simpler and lighter airframe, with more fuel capacity and less sophisticated electronics. France agreed to sell 50 Mirage 5 JS to Israel, but in 1967, after the Six-Day War, France imposed an arms embargo on Israel and refused to deliver the aircraft. Israel was not happy with this situation and decided to take matters into its own hands. Using its intelligence network, Israel managed to obtain technical specifications and blueprints of the Mirage 5 from third-party operators, such as Switzerland and South Africa. Israel also obtained a license to produce the General Electric J-79 engine, which was used on the American F-4 Phantom II. Israel then started to produce its own version of the Mirage 5, called the Nesher, which means eagle in Hebrew. The Nesher was a faithful copy of the Mirage 5, but it had some minor modifications, such as an improved ejection seat and a Martin Baker 00 ejection seat. The Nesher entered service with the Israeli Air Force in 1971 and proved to be effective in the Yom Kippur War of 1973. However, Israel soon realized that the Nesher was not enough to counter the new generation of Soviet fighters that its enemies were acquiring, such as the MiG-23 and the MiG-25. Israel needed a more powerful and modern fighter, that's why Israel decided to upgrade the Nesher with a new engine, new avionics, and new aerodynamic features. The new engine was the J-79, which gave the aircraft more thrust and speed than the original Atar engine. The new avionics included a radar, a fire control system, a navigation system, and a flight recorder. The new aerodynamic features included canards on the air intakes, strakes on the nose, and dog-toothed leading edges on the wings. These changes improved the stability and maneuverability of the aircraft at low speeds and high angles of attack. The result of this upgrade was the Kafir, which means lion cub in Hebrew. The first prototype of the Kafir flew in September 1973, just before the Yom Kippur War broke out. The Kafir was not ready for combat yet. But some sources claim that a few modified Mirage 3 with J-79 engines were used in the war under the name Barak, which means lightning in Hebrew. The Kafir entered service with the Israeli Air Force in 1975 and became its main air superiority fighter until the arrival of the F-15 Eagle in 1976. The Kafir had several variants, such as the C-2, which had improved avionics and weapons systems. The TC-2, which was a two-seat trainer, the C-7, which had an enhanced engine and more hardpoints, and the C-10, which had an advanced radar and helmet-mounted display system. The Kafir also had several export versions, such as the F-21 Alliant for the US Navy and Marine Corps, the Cheetah for South Africa, and others for Colombia, Ecuador, and Sri Lanka. The Kafir was a remarkable achievement for Israel's aerospace industry. It showed that Israel could produce its own fighter jets based on foreign designs, but with significant improvements and innovations. The Kafir was also a formidable fighter in its own right. It could fly at Mach 2.3, reach an altitude of 17 kilometers, carry up to 5 tons of weapons, and engage multiple targets with its missiles and guns. The Kafir was truly a lion cub that could roar like a lion. Now, let's see how it performed in different conflicts and scenarios. The Kafir was a versatile and reliable aircraft that could handle both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. It also served as an adversary aircraft for training purposes by the US and other countries. 
The Kier's first recorded combat action took place on November 9, 1977, during an Israeli airstrike on a training camp at Tel Azia, in Lebanon. The camp was used by Palestinian guerrillas and their allies, and was heavily defended by anti-aircraft guns and missiles. The Kafirs, escorted by F-15s, penetrated the enemy airspace at low altitude and high speed, and delivered their bombs with precision and accuracy. The strike was a success, destroying the camp and killing hundreds of militants. The only air victory claimed by a Kafir during its service with the Israeli Air Force occurred on June 27, 1979, when a Kafir C-2 shot down a Syrian MiG-21 over Lebanon. The Syrian pilot was captured by Israeli forces and later exchanged for an Israeli pilot who had been shot down by a Syrian missile. The Kafir pilot, Captain Avihu Ben Nun, later became the commander of the Israeli Air Force. During the 1982 invasion of southern Lebanon, codenamed Operation Peace for Galilee, the Kafirs were used mainly for ground attack missions against Syrian and Palestinian targets. The Kafirs faced intense anti-aircraft fire and occasional dogfights with Syrian fighters, but they managed to inflict heavy damage on the enemy forces. The Kafirs also supported the Israeli ground troops with close air support and reconnaissance. One of the most notable foreign operators of the Kafir was Ecuador, which acquired 10 Kafirs in 1981 to counter Peru's purchase of Mirage 2000. The Ecuadorian Kafirs formed the Lions Squadron, based at Tora Air Base. In 1995, a border dispute between Ecuador and Peru escalated into a full-scale war, known as the Senapa War. The Ecuadorian Kafirs played a key role in defending Ecuadorian airspace and attacking Peruvian positions. On February 10, 1995, a Kafir C-2 shot down a Peruvian A-37B with an infrared missile, scoring the first and only air-to-air -air kill of the war. Another interesting use of the Kafir was as an adversary aircraft by the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps under the designation F-21 Alion. Between 1985 and 1989, the U.S. leased 25 Kafirs from Israel to simulate enemy fighters in dissimilar air combat training. The F-21A had narrow canards and strakes on the nose to improve its maneuverability and handling at low speeds. The F-21A was unarmed and had no radar, but it could fly at Mach 2.3 and challenge the U.S. pilots with its agility and speed. The Kafir is still in service with some countries today, such as Colombia, Sri Lanka, and ATAC, a civilian defense contractor that provides tactical adversary services to the U.S. military. The Kafir has been upgraded with new avionics, radars, engines, and weapons systems to keep up with modern standards. Some of these upgrades include the Elta ELM-203 to radar, which can track multiple targets simultaneously, the helmet-mounted display system, which allows the pilot to aim his missiles with his head moving movements, and the Python 4 and Derby missiles, which have longer range and better guidance than the older Shafrir 2, the Kafir is one of the most successful examples of Israel's aerospace industry. It shows that Israel could produce its own fighter jets based on foreign designs, but with significant improvements and innovations. The Kafir was also a formidable fighter in its own right. It could fly at Mach 2.3, reach an altitude of 17 kilometers, carry up to 5 tons of weapons, and engage multiple targets with its missiles and guns. The Kafir was truly a lion cub that could roar like a lion, a total of 220 Kafirs were built by IAI between 1973 and 1991. Of these, 187 were delivered to the Israeli Air Force, while 33 were exported to Colombia, Ecuador, Sri Lanka, and the United States. As of 2021, Colombia operates 23 Kafirs, Sri Lanka operates 5, ATAC operates 6 while Ecuador has retired its fleet in 2019. Israel has also offered pre-owned Kafirs to other countries such as Argentina, Bulgaria, Croatia, and Uruguay, but no deals have been finalized yet. The Kafir remains a viable and affordable option for countries that need a multi-role combat aircraft with a proven track record and a 40-year guaranteed so far, we have learned about the development and service of the Kafir, the Israeli Lion Cub that became a legend. But what about the latest upgrades and enhancements that have been applied to this amazing weapon? How does the Kafir compare to today's air combat environment? Let's find out! 
The Kafir has been constantly upgraded and improved by Israel Aerospace Industries, the company that produces and markets the aircraft. One of the most important upgrades is the C-10CECOA version, which features the Elta ELM203 to radar. This is a multi-mode fire control radar that can track multiple targets simultaneously and provide high-resolution ground mapping. It also enables the Kafir to use advanced air-to-air -air missiles, such as the Python 3 and Python 4, which have long longer range and better guidance than the older Shafrir 2. The C-10 CECOA version also has a helmet-mounted display system, which allows the pilot to aim his missiles with his head movements and other advanced features, such as a digital cockpit, a new ejection seat, and an in-flight refueling probe. Another upgrade is the Block 60 version, which features an AESA radar and iDerby ER missiles. AESA stands for Active Electronically Scanned Array which is a type of radar that uses multiple small antennas to form a beam that can be steered electronically. This makes the radar more agile, reliable, and resistant to jamming than conventional radars. The iDerby ER is an extended range version of the iDerby missile, which has a range of over 100 kilometers and can engage targets beyond visual range. The Block 60 version also has improved avionics, such as a glass cockpit, a digital flight control system, and a data link. The latest upgrade is the next generation version, which was revealed at Paris Air Show 2019. This version has improved systems and sensors, such as a new electronic warfare suite, a new infrared search and track system, and a new cockpit display. The NG version also has increased fuel capacity and reduced maintenance costs, these upgrades make the Kafir more competitive and capable in today's air combat environment. The Kafir can now perform various missions such as air superiority, air defense, interdiction, close air support, reconnaissance, and training. The Kafir can also operate in all weather conditions and at night. The Kafir can also challenge modern fighters with its speed, agility, and firepower. The Kafir is not only an amazing weapon, but also an amazing survivor. It has been in service for over 40 years, and it still has a lot to offer. The Kafir is a testament to Israel's ingenuity and innovation in aerospace engineering. The Kafir is truly a lion cub that never stops growing. That's all for today's episode of Amazing Weapons. Thank you for watching this video about the Kafir, the Israeli lion cub that became a legend. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more amazing weapons. And don't forget to leave your comments below. What do you think of the Kafir? Do you think it is still a viable and affordable option for countries that need a multi-role combat aircraft? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. See you next time on Amazing Weapons.